Hey, everybody, we're just about to get started, uh, get settled. Uh, yeah, okay, great, I'm the host. I think we should get started because we only have a 30 minute slot here. There's a lot of interesting stuff to cover. Uh, for those of, for panelists, don't be afraid. We're not going to do all the questions. It's not nearly enough time, but we'll try and do the interesting ones. What I'd like to do first is to welcome our panelists today, as well as our audience. We're going to be talking about HTAP. We'll find out what that is, and we'll be talking about how it compares to OLTP, transaction processing combined with analytic databases. So let me first do a round robin. Ed, uh, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi. Uh, yeah, this is Ed uh, from PinCap. I am the co-founder and the CTO of uh, PinCap. And the PinCap is the company behind uh, TIDB, uh, TIDB, and it is an open source HTAP distributed database. Yeah, yeah, that's that, 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 that's me. Great. Uh, let's pick Alex. Pick on Alexander next. <clears throat> Hi guys. Uh, I'm Alexander Zaitsev. I'm co-founder and CTO of Altinity. Uh, which uh, is organizing the conference today, uh, thanks to us. And uh, I have a lot of experience with databases from 2000s. So let's talk a little bit about that. And Peter Zaitsev. Yes, well, uh, let me start with an uh, important uh, question <laughs> first. Alexander Zaitsev is not my brother, <laughs> or otherwise related. Uh, yeah. We just happen to share uh, the same, uh, uh, same last name. Mm. Uh, uh, yeah. And uh, uh, yes, uh, I, I am a founder of uh, Pure Corner and I was involved in open source database ecosystem now for quite a few years. That's right. And Peter, oh, yeah, right, I this... also started, helped to start from uh, Altinity, but yeah. I'm not I'll... directly involved. This isn't letting me show your book, Peter. Uh, I gotta uh, get yes, you to sign yes. it sometime. High performance, my sequel, so. Uh, yeah. Peter and, and Vadim have been doing this at Percona for a long time. Thanks, guys. So uh, let's get started. I want to just throw out a question. Start with Ed. Ed, what is this thing called HTAP and how did it get started? Yeah, uh, the HTAP, I think uh, from the name, hybrid transactional analytical processing, that means um, this is a very ambitious uh, target for you know a database. That means basically the database can uh, simultaneously serve the online transactional workload. At the meantime, uh, you, you can still run the analytical or ad hoc analytical query just directly on top of it. You don't need to move the data around to another data warehouse or uh, using a, a complicated ETL process to 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 you know uh, migrate the data to another data warehouse. So basically, it is a <clears throat> it's a very uh, kind of like the dream the database. Uh, but I would say this concept is not a new concept. Let's uh, back to like thirty or forty years ago. At that time, we don't have we don't even have OLTP or we don't even have OLAP. At that time, like. Uh, 17th or, or 18th at um the 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 only database solution kind of like you only have db2 or oracle uh and you don't have uh that much large amount of data so basically you can you don't need to uh separate it, the the OLTP and the OAP. um so basically the h tab the the <clears throat> the concept is uh, is to the customer is much more easier to to provide an easier way uh, for the developer to for engineer to 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 use database. Um, to in in my own perspective, now they uh, in last decades we we in, invented so many different data technology. Uh, we have hundreds of different databases. So it's time. I think that the have uh, presented a trend that we want to make everything easier or uh, maybe we can possibly provide the one-stop solution for most of the workload. Yeah, this the this I, I would say it's a trend. Yeah. But I think the, the very first the very first HTAP implementation in my mind is uh, uh, IBM DB2. Uh, the uh, yes, IBM D2 analytical accelerator. 
Uh, Robert, yeah. if, if Robert, you if you're, 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 if you're allowed, if you're, I'm out. Yeah. Uh, you, thank you, thank you, guys. Uh, yeah, let me turn this around then. So Peter and and Alexander, this need to combine transaction processing and, and analytics is not new. How have people traditionally been handling this in databases like uh, MySQL, like uh, like ClickHouse? Well, I mean, if you look at uh, uh, at uh, MySQL, uh, you know, doing this, uh, something, I would say, like a medium or heavy duty analytical queries was uh, always a pain, right? Yes. And uh, to me, is uh, I remember what it's like in the early 2000s, there was this like a first trend. Well, uh, you know what? If you really want to run a complicated queries in MySQL, maybe you create a lot of threads and maybe have some replicas, right? Some people would have, you know, those kind of massive, uh, their own kind of executors, which you chop a query around, right? And aggregate results and so on. So, and that was kind of a miserable uh, yes. uh, experience, if you will, right? And uh, uh, then uh, what happened uh, in a kind of, a, I would say like a next generation was Hadoop, right? Was, hey, you know what? You can now use this kind of fantastic uh, map reduce, right? You spin up a lot of uh, nodes and that was, easier than dealing with all that, uh, you know, funky parallel scripts or Java, right, or whatever you have, but that was uh, uh, not, still not very easy, right, uh, nor it, uh, their Hadoop was very, uh, very performant, right, and I think that is only after, uh, you know, oh, a few years, we started to get the idea of, a, hey, uh, column store engines, Right, which would be directly storage engines, which would uh, still allow you to. Well, and I'm speaking like the name uh, in an open source space, right? Because I think like their column store in research, right? Commercial database existed in uh, a little bit earlier, uh, but we had seen that uh, coming in open source, and which kind of allow say, hey, you know, you don't no more have to uh, screw around with Max uh, Map Reduce, but you can just use your favorite. Uh, um, Mm, uh, SQL, you just have to just get the data across, right? And you can think about uh, their mm, uh, HTAP as the, like a next evolution in that case. And well, now what if you don't have to move the data around, right? But uh, you just have everything integrated uh, in one system, right? So that is how I see their uh, evolution, right? Wherever that is, you know, like nirvana or not, right? I have some opinion on that, but I will leave that for another round. Alexander, you've built a bunch of these systems and helped hundreds of people build analytic systems. What do you see as the patterns for how people integrate this stuff today? Uh, I would say that there are cycles, right? So in 20 years ago, uh, there was monolith systems, more or less, that could work both for uh, OLTP workload and for analytics. It could be not ideal, as Peter just said, but uh, we didn't know other systems. There were Oracle, Sybase, Microsoft SQL Server, and a few others. Uh, then there was Michael Stonebreaker that came to the market and said, one system cannot fit all and let's build dedicated databases for different workloads. Like uh, we built database for analytics and call it vertical. We will build something else for uh, stream processing, call it a different way. We will build uh, something for OLTP. And those are very, very focused databases for particular use cases. And now we're thinking of our next round of the cycle when we're trying to come with a solution that combines those properties together, similar to what we could see uh, 20 or 30 years ago, but at a different technology level. So for me, it's very interesting what has changed in the last 20 years uh, to make it possible. So it could, it wasn't possible 20 years ago. Uh, that's why we had this huge uh, landscape of different solutions. And now we are coming back to those universal solutions that we're talking about. So what has changed? So 
Hey, Ed, maybe you could comment then. So this is, I like this idea of these cycles. Yeah. Where is it that you feel like you're getting, your users are getting traction with your solution? I, I think that'd be yeah. a great topic to delve into. I think, uh, I think the, 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 another great question is, is what will have changed? Um, yes. I, I will, I will finish ask, uh, answering the, what have changed and, and then I, I will talk about the workload or, or, uh, the, the, from the customer perspective. I think from the technical perspective, perspective, uh, two two things uh, are dramatically changed. One is that distributed architecture uh, is um, I think it may make HTAP possible. For example, um, uh, just just like Peter mentioned, uh, the Hadoop uh, the become uh, have become more and more uh, become popular uh, in in the last last 10 years, but I think the most important uh, thing that uh, Hadoop bring is actually we can use the share nothing architecture for uh, you know storing large amount of data and uh, create multiple copies and uh, make it scale. And I think this idea in last decade fundamentally changed the, the design of uh, database. So uh, as you use TiDB as an example, at the very beginning, uh, we, we just want to build a distributed OLTP database. Um, if you want to uh, just uh, at, at the early days, we just want to build a better MySQL sharding solution. But uh, if you want to build an OLTP database, that means you, you, you need high availability. The only way to implement high availability is create multiple copies, multiple replica, build the data re re redundant uh, so that you can provide the HA, right? And, and at that time, we think, hey, um, we we can put the the different shard and the different uh, <clears throat> uh, the the different range of data to different machine. Why not? We can just use one of the the, the replica, uh, one copy of the data. We can change the data structure to the columnar storage, and then the architecture is totally decoupled because in TiDBS architecture, the the computing and the storage is totally separated. So the computing engine will redirect the OLAP query to the columnar replica. So from the user's perspective, it is a one system, but under the hood, we store the data into different format and we synchronize the data under the hood. So that's uh, the first thing. Uh, that's the first thing that the distributed architecture uh, to change the way we think about the the H tab. The second the second thing is <clears throat> is that the hardware uh, really changed a lot uh, in past like twenty years, right? In in the last uh, we have now we we have high speed NVN SSD. We have high speed network in the modern data center. So building a distributed system, the user experience is very pretty much similar to you know building using the local uh, single node software so yeah i think uh for also you use uh tidb as a as a example our columnar storage uh you know in the old days the columnar storage sometimes only provide a read only or you can only update the data in in a batch because uh the, the corner storage cannot support the in-place update uh, with a very high performance. But uh, I, I think this is not uh, true for the more than uh, the media, more than uh, disk. Like, and um, you can you can still uh, you can you can build an LSN tree based, but the data under the hood is corner uh, format and make it support in-place update and. Uh, Mutation, delete. So um, I think that's that's a two major um, uh, change for uh, now nowadays we can so that we can implement the practical H type system. The second, from the user's perspective, that's that's easy because uh, people and user always want to use a simple, simple, uh, simple system. They don't. You know, building the the ETL pipeline or move, uh, building moving the data around is not that easy. So, if there is a practical, uh, simple solution, uh, people always want to want to use that. Yeah. 
Uh, that's my own opinion. Yeah. Great. And just the follow on then, <clears throat> uh, where do you feel like HTAP is getting, from your perspective, is getting real perspective in terms of use cases or real uh, attraction, excuse me? I think um, like a fraud detection uh, or, you know, real time dashboarding. And uh, also, uh, in my mind, there is a, a, a huge kind of uh, use case like SaaS. You know, when uh, you build, want to build a SaaS application, uh, the, the, the your your customer always want to build their own dashboard your or their own data model uh, for different tenant. So that that means you cannot easily catch the the result. So the 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 SaaS uh, application uh, or the data intensive application, uh, I I can see more and more traction of using HTAP databases mm -hmm. to reduce the complexity for building the such systems. Yeah. So um, real-time dashboards are great. And I think we want to dig a little bit deeper into that. Uh, we love real-time dashboards. So Alexander, I wonder how do people build, let's look back at, you know, sort of the siloed approach. How are people building real-time dashboards in the systems that, that you look at? In fact, real-time dashboards, they don't require a stop. They only require uh, data to, uh, to, to flow in real time. Uh, it could be in batches, but batches could be uh, small enough. Uh, from user perspective, real time is something that they can press a button and uh, get results on the screen quickly. And this data shouldn't be latent more than a few seconds or a few minutes even is acceptable in some cases. But let's let's uh, uh, let's set few few seconds as a goal. If we're talking about few seconds uh, before event happens somewhere and it is reaching the dashboard, then we're talking of batch, uh, batches already. We don't need a single row in source. We don't need sin single row updates, maybe. If you're talking about analytical systems, we usually convert updates to inserts anyways. And we can push data in one second batches, for example, or smaller. And uh, for from people perspective, this is, this is a real time. It's different for uh, use cases like fraud detection, maybe, where uh, we use some algorithms that uh, run uh, uh, on uh, data and uh, those algorithms they are very sens they could be very sensitive to latency but not people so i would say the dashboards themselves those are not uh, don't have a requirement of htap database they only require fast analytics and uh, data to be consumed by this system fast enough but they don't care about details mm -hmm. Peter, your perspective on real-time dashboards coming off things like MySQL and Postgres? Well, uh, look, I, I think uh, in this case, uh, uh, the, uh, as Alex uh, said, uh, you know, you just need to make sure data is updated uh, easy, yeah. uh, quickly enough, uh, right? Uh, in this case, wherever it is a H type or, se uh, or separate system means less, right? And I think in this case, uh, to me, uh, their uh, real question in this case is in terms of those approaches. Hey, you know, do you want uh, those two systems, especially essentially integrated um, in the same system or uh, a little bit more decoupled, right? And there are uh, obviously like um, benefits and uh, and drawbacks uh, in uh, uh, in uh, both approaches, right? As if everything engineering is a trade-off, right? Uh, uh, and for me, that is a, a very interesting, like how is that going to play out, right? Over a longer term, right? For example, if you think about, you know, you know, camera and a cell phone, they kind of fuse together, right? For majority of people, most of the day we use our cell phone for photos most of the time, right? And that gives yeah. us good enough feature. And then that, uh, mm, uh, that's, you know, we just use exceptional, right? For photos separately, right? Now, at the same time, if you think about car and boat, even though we have amphibious cars, they didn't took off, right? People who like boats and cars, they typically have them separately, uh, right? In this case, right? And I think if you look at that uh, analogy, right, it's still, for me, is kind of as uh, earlier to say, like, where is that going to be, right? Is it going to be 
HTAP more like an amphibious car, when you can say, well, in certain cases, you need to do it both, right? Or it's going to be like a cell phone where other solution will uh, going to be uh, the exception, right, in this case. And I think that is, is, a, is a question which is uh, yet to be answered. Now, yeah. I think what is also interesting in this case, right, is what uh, is how you approach that integration in HTAP. Right. Uh, if you think about what uh, MariaDB does in their cloud, for example, right, is they are uh, actually have like a query router and essentially like a two separate engines which mm, have that uh, uh, that uh, uh, that replication uh, right between. Or even if you speak about their uh, like well, you know, Oracle and uh, uh, Heatwave approach, right. It's also kind of a relatively separate uh, entity uh, which exists out there, right? And what that I think is makes it interesting also, right, is uh, uh, a lot of that level, uh, how you look at that, right? You can sort of look at solution as an HTAP, even though it has kind of some more identified building blocks, right? So for example, I well can imagine us having their MySQL and ClickHouse with a uh, proxy, let's say on top of it, which, you know, uh, wrote queries <laughs> appropriately, right? And which looks like HTAP system for for user, right? From, you know, dashboard and standpoint and all that. Hmm. I, Great. I like the, yeah. I like the metaphor of uh, the, the, the smartphone. Yeah, because I think, uh, you know, at least, the LTP system and our AP system both speaks SQL. <laughs> so I, I think from the user's perspective, they can be merged into one system. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I, oh, oh, go ahead, Peter. No, no well, <laughs> I'm saying, I think that is like one of the, of the thing here, right? But what I think is in terms of what like that cycles goes, right? It's also a question mm -hmm. of their complexity, right? Yeah. Uh, and to me, it's kind of was interesting about their, more capable system is not always better, right? I remember in my early days in MySQL, for example, one of the things that many people loved about is, is what everything you could do with MySQL fit in a book, right? <laughs> everything you could do in Oracle required a shelf or maybe kind of even uh, even suitcase, mm -hmm. right? And that kind of uh, richness, right? That really introduced a lot of, uh, complexity, right? You may have somebody implemented kind of weird thing, right? An Oracle, which was kind of very hard to maintain, <laughs> uh, right? And you would not be able to, uh, you know, get some benefits, right? So I think it's interesting, right? If you look at from a technology adoption scale, not everything comes to the technology benefits or, or lack of it off, but also to the organizational question. And there is this kind of a cycle going on. Oh, should we merge it? Or should we kind of separate the team, right? Kind of constantly goes back, right? I think that is sort of, sort of like this, you know, autonomy and control, right? Has been kind of going on back and forth, right? For like, well, as long as I can read about, right? <laughs> Which I think yeah. you also have to consider here. But yeah, so, from, from, yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was just going to add, I was just going to ask you, you know, sort of get, carrying on on this boat and car. And LG, are there problems that you see as particularly challenging in combining these two types of stores. And I'll give you an example that came out. You guys did a really excellent conference a couple of weeks ago. And one of the things I learned there is it's like in PinCap as it exists today, it's difficult to partition the data in different ways between the row store and the column store. That's an example of, of where the coupling is making things a little bit harder. I wonder if you could just comment on that and, and how that affects the problems you can solve. Uh, to me? Yes, yeah, for oh, you. Oh, okay, okay, sure. I think um, the, the, the one thing is that uh, the cloud native architecture will dramatically change the, the design of the HTAP system. So uh, you, you are right, in the early days, if you're just using the traditional share nothing architecture, uh, you, you, you need to always choose the partition uh, method for, for your data, right? But I think on the on, on, on the cloud, 
in the cloud, uh, we can leverage the the cloud storage service like S3, uh, and uh, also some you know the, the the EBS or other storage service provided by cloud. And they, um, I think that's the um, that can bring us more possibility for for us to to building the better uh, user experience uh, HTAP HTAP systems. And actually, we are we are building the prototype of uh, the cloud uh, native storage engine for TiDB, and uh, I would say the the result is uh, really promising. And I can see the poss poss possibility. Bas basically, you can just image like a, a OLTP version of Snowflake. Uh, I think that can reach the the. Um, the 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 basic or, or the or the or the requirement for the mission critical workload or RTP workload, so that's that that that, that that's the the very promising direction uh, I think for building HTAP systems. Yeah, Alexander, <clears throat> you know, you know, as we've gone through this and talked about boats and cars and cell phones and and differences, you made a great point earlier on about the cycles and. It, so it leads to a question right now, it looks like things for many, for some application, at least having a simpler system from the user perspective seems better, uh, a consolidated system. Can you think of things that would cause the pendulum to swing back to where decoupled systems would again uh, be ascendant? I don't think that the coupling is, uh, is a trend right now. As Peter said, uh, uh, we have a lot of building blocks that we can combine together. And certainly there are examples like uh, uh, TidyB, right? That tries to build a system that does both, but uh, we have a lot of technologies around that we can combine, uh, mix and match, right? In order to build an optimal solution for the user. And uh, this approach actually have a lot of benefits, even though the end result is the same, right? But uh, using this uh, decoupling approach um, allows to uh, evolve all individual components on their own paths and just make them better individually. Uh, and also, um, if we're talking about H type system, right, you can take ClickHouse and MySQL, or you can take ClickHouse and Mongo, or you can take, I don't know, MariaDB with those technologies together. And you have a lot of choices to combine that may fit better for your particular use case. This gives better uh, experience for end users who have a lot of choices, not just tidy beer or Oracle or some other big company, because these technologies is hard to build in one system. It is a hard problem. Yeah. And I actually yeah. give a lot of credits to your company who is doing that. We, with a coupling of simpler companies and smaller companies, it's much easier and that uh, provides a lot of uh, variety uh, for the users of possible solutions. So I think this is the, uh, this is an advantage at least right now. It may change in the future. Yes, I think the the one thing I I want to make it very clear is that HTAP is not going to solve all the problems. Uh, for example, right. if you are using MongoDB and you want to build this one system providing MongoDB semantic uh, and also provide the SQL analytical capability, I think that's really really hard to build. But I think the uh, the HTAP database uh, the SQL is really important. Yeah, the the mm -hmm. sync unified occurring interface. Guys, we are at the end of our slot. So um, it sounds like what I get out of this conversation, I'm sure every audience member takes away, but this is a big market. There's room for a lot of solutions. We're working on the coupled, you know, the coupled independent systems. Uh, you're working on bringing them together. So I think what we should do is just plan to have another panel discussion in a year and see what progress we've made. Yeah. All right. Love to. Thank you very much, everybody. And uh, have a great day. Our next panel discussion will be in five to 10 minutes. Uh, so head on over there and we'll talk to you there. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Bye bye. Great conversation. Bye. Yeah.